is a mace really an easier weapon to use than a sword? Hi folks, Matt Eaton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. Now, is a mace easier to use than a sword? This is actually a point which has come un under the comments under various of my videos recently where bludgeoning weapons have been touched on briefly. Also axes as well. And this is something I hear very common that, oh, one of the advantages of a mace over, an uh, over a sword or an axe over a sword is it's easier to use. Now, I have done videos about this in the past debunking this. Just very briefly, I'm gonna touch on why. First of all, I think everybody pretty much understands the fundamentals of how to hit someone with a top heavy object, be it a hammer, a baseball bat, a stick, a mace or an axe. Okay, so from that basis, I can see why some people think that uh, a top heavy kind of bludgeoning instrument is somehow easier to use than a sword. Um, However, I disagree with that fundamentally, and there's a number of reasons why. Firstly, the sword is more nimble. It's more weighted towards the hand. Also, it's got an edge all over it, and a point, and a hand guard, and a really nicely uh, ergonomic grip for the most part as well. So actually, for example, if I think about my HEMA class, which, well, classes, which I teach a couple of HEMA classes a week, if I was teaching people how to fight with a sword or fight with a mace, which would be easier? Well, actually, they'd find the sword less tiring to use, and actually they'd get the fundamentals, probably, of offense and defense, both of those things, quicker with the sword, because it's easier to pick up, it's lighter, it's more nimble, and you can hit someone with any part of the edge and do some amount of damage, more, probably quicker and easier than something like a bat or a mace. Fundamentally, this type of bludgeoning instrument actually has a few disadvantages for the noob or the beginner. Yeah, we all understand how to hit someone with it, but I think what a lot of people overlook is that the opponent is presumably trying to fight back. Um, now, that being the case, this is almost always a shorter weapon, and the thing, most axes are anyway, one-handed axes, most maces are, uh, even something like a baseball bat, is shorter than most swords. So you've got less reach, you've got less hand protection, uh, but moreover, really, with one of these, the only part of the weapon in which you'll really do damage with, doesn't matter whether it's a mace or in fact something like a warhammer here, or whether it's some kind of axe, is the head. Now, when you're moving around and you're both trying to fight each other, that actually means you've got to be quite accurate with which part of the weapon hits the opponent, because yes, you'll hurt them if you hit them with this part of the weapon, but you're not really gonna put them out of the fight. You're only gonna put them out of the fight if you hit them with the head, same thing with a hammer, same thing with an ax. So proportionately, you've only got about this much optimum hitting sort of uh, region of the weapon, as opposed to a sword, where although you do have a center of percussion and the part where it's the most effective to hit them with, actually you can hit them with any part of the edge and both edges or stab them with the point and you're gonna theoretically kill them or put them out of combat just with one good hit. One of these weapons, unless you get them in the head, yeah, you might, you know, you might win them, you might break a rib, you might break a, a bone in their arm, but for the most part, you're probably not gonna put them out of the fight unless you hit them in the head really hard with it. And that goes very often for things like uh, war hammers and picks and things like that. We've got to look at the context in which these weapons came about. And there are essentially two, let's say three actually, three um, contexts in which things like maces came about. Now, I'm gonna deal with the most important for the, uh, the medieval period, and that is armored fighting, okay? So these came about as an answer to armored fighting. Now, I'm gonna come back to armored fighting at the end. The second two um, areas in which these came up were in were law enforcement. That's right, so think of the police truncheon, the humble police truncheon, or baton, you might call it in your country. These were actually used, maces were actually used in a legal capacity, a law enforcement capacity, in medieval countries and cities, specifically because they were less lethal than a sword. Because if you're a law keeper, an alderman or whatever, and you're patrolling the streets and you, you catch uh, someone who's trying to pilfer some goods from a merchant, you chase after them, they try to put up a fight, and you hit them with your implement, if you hit them with a sword, you're probably gonna kill them uh, from blood loss or infection further down the line, all this kind of thing, even if you don't kill them in that second. Whereas you can hit them deliberately in the body or the arm or the leg with a mace, 
and you're going to put them down, you're going to arrest them, but they're not going to die. For this reason also, these weapons were supposedly preferred by churchmen over swords as well. Now the final medieval context in which these weapons might sometimes be used instead of a sword, for example, is indeed where someone doesn't have access to a sword. So maybe not this type of flange mace, because these flange maces probably cost about the same as a sword in their time. This particular weapon isn't necessarily any cheaper in the 15th century than this weapon. Maybe a bit, but not much. Uh, similar thing for a warhammer. However, if we go to, particularly if we look at the 13th or the 14th century, we sometimes see sidearms being carried instead of swords, such as simple headed picks, or uh, sometimes war hammers, sometimes certain types of mace, which are just a metal head on a wooden shaft, sometimes things like flails, sometimes axes, and they are being used instead of a sword because they are more accessible and cheaper than a sword. So someone coming off a farm who doesn't have a lot of money, if, they, if their primary weapon is a bow, a crossbow, a, a pole arm of some kind, like a spear, pike, halberd, whatever, or indeed firearms uh, from the 14th century onwards, they want a backup weapon. They're probably going to have a knife or a dagger as well, but they want a primary backup weapon. If they don't have access to a sword, they can't afford a sword, they might make do with an axe or a simple headed mace. So sometimes economics come into it. Right, so those are the, there might be other reasons, but those are the three main reasons why someone might use something like a mace or a warhammer instead of a sword. Economic, or it might be um, specifically for non or less lethal effects, so law keeping or religious, or armoured fighting. So let's just focus on armoured fighting for a second. So when we're dealing with armoured fighting, we have a fundamental problem of how do you make your weapon effective against somebody who's wearing lots of armour. Now, initially, if we go all the way back to the 11th, 12th, 13th century, we're dealing with people who are predominantly wearing mail, commonly known as chain mail, over a gambeson with a plate helmet of some sort. As we go into the 14th century, there's far more use of plate armour in addition to mail, and by the 15th century, we've got huge amounts of plate armour, as well as mail, brigandine, and other types of things as well. But fundamentally, an armoured opponent is not very easy to take out with a sword. Okay, now let's briefly, very, very briefly, consider the ways that people in armour are taken out with swords. They are not predominantly taken out by hitting them really hard, because on something like this uh, helmet or the arms and legs or torso armour of the 15th century, it doesn't really do anything, okay? It doesn't really do anything at all. If you're talking about sport combat, tournament fighting, then indeed they gave blows to helmets. Same thing in modern Bohurt, for example, where, where people just hit each other really hard on the armour. It's fun, it's very athletic, somewhat scary, somewhat dangerous. It's quite hardcore, but it's not how you overcome an, op an armoured opponent. How you overcome an armoured opponent is by wounding them in places where you can get through, between, behind, under the armour. Okay, so in armoured fighting in the 15th century, we're mostly talking about half swording, we're mostly talking about wrestling distance, we're talking about trying to get the point into the armpit or the visor slit or the groin or the inside of the elbows, gaps essentially, or get the person on the ground where you can wrestle them and pull out a dagger and stab them again in a gap or remove bits of their armour to stab into gaps. Okay, so bypassing the armour. However, some weapons did come along which were effective simply hitting the person hard. Now, one of the most important weapons in the 15th century, of course, is the pole axe. And this gives you options. It gives you some of the sword options because you've still got a sharp point on both ends. So you can still go for armpits. You can still try and get into gaps. But additionally, you've got things like the axe blade and the hammer blade and various other options that you might have on there, like a, a beak, for example where you can actually hook the person, you can smash the person really, really hard, and obviously with a pole axe, you've got the added length, mass, and leverage of that as well. But when we're talking about short weapons, that's when now the mace comes into its own, because in an unarmoured fight, the sword will almost always beat the mace, just used one-on-one -on -one if we ignore things like armour, shields, bucklers, all of those other things. If one person has a mace, and the other person has a sword, the person with the sword, unarmoured, in the street, has a massive advantage, which is almost certainly why, by the 15th and 16th centuries, duelists wore swords. They didn't carry maces around, because anyone carrying a mace against someone with a longsword, or later on a side sword or a rapier, would be mincemeat, okay? 
However, in a military context where we're in close, we're fighting in armor, it's pell-mell, in that case, the mace comes into its own. And here it is, here's the headline. In that situation, the mace is easier to use. Okay, let's just focus on that for a second. Why? Quite simply because using a sword in armor against another opponent with a sword is quite technical. You need to be uh, very good on your feet, pretty good at wrestling, at least have a gr good gr solid grounding in wrestling, and you need to be very really precise about what you're doing with your weapon. There's, there's techniques in order to protect yourself from their sword and in order to get your sword point primarily, but also bashing with the pommel or hooking with the quillons, but primarily thrusting with the point into the gaps that it needs to go. And that's quite difficult and that's quite technical under pressure. That's why this entire treatise is devoted to it. How many treatises are devoted to using a mace in armor? Two, I think, mention it. The reason is because it's easy. If you know how to hit someone with a stick in a fight, you know how to use a mace <laughs> because you just hit them really, really hard. Uh, and you can hit them in bits of uh, joints of their armor to try and jam up and damage the joints of the armor, try and immobilize the armor. But additionally, just the bludgeoning effect and even getting into maybe grappling as well and adding in uh, grappling with the strikes. But even if you're fighting at distance, either with a shield like a pavis, for example, or just with an open hand, you can, of course, because you're wearing armor, if they're swinging something at you like a sword, if they happen to swing a sword stupidly in armor, you can literally just put your armor up in the way and give them a return strike with the mace. Just hit them really, really hard in the head or the knee or the, uh, you know, the elbow or the shoulder, places where you're going to have an effect on them through the armor because this has such a top heavy, uh, a lot of momentum, a lot of energy transference through the plate. Okay, so. To summarize, is the mace easier to use than a sword? Generally speaking, no, because most combat doesn't rely on its ease on what weapon is in your hand. In fact, some weapons can make unarmored combat, you know, civilian fighting in clothes easier because they are very offensive. They have edges around them and points such as swords. And that's why swords were so popular for dueling because they've got good reach, good hand protection, nimble balance, and they're edged all around, they're difficult to grab. These weapons are easier to grab and counter um, and block. Um, whereas this might be a disadvantage in an unarmored situation, but fundamentally fighting is fighting. If you're fighting someone with any kind of weapon, the most thing you have to learn is how to fight. If I was training people on a weekly basis how to use maces, I'd teach them very much the same things, like 90% of the same stuff as I teach them for a sword or an axe or a dagger or anything else. So teaching martial arts or teaching combat is that. The weapon is just incidental and you modify what you do and have certain uh, strengths and weaknesses to your stats based on the weapon you're using, but fundamentally what you're teaching is fighting. So is it easier to use a mace than a sword? Fundamentally, no. They're both weapons that you use. Fighting is what you're using. However, I will say that specifically in armor, I would say that in armored fighting, using a weapon like a mace, simply as a bludgeoning instrument, or we could say the warhammer or even an ax, because you can have effect just striking with it, which pretty much everybody already knows how to do, especially if you've learned to fight out of armor, is easy, is easier than the technical and precise techniques of trying to use a sword in armor because just striking with the sword won't do very much against armor. You have to really thrust into gaps, you have to wrestle to get to those gaps, and it's more technical and more complicated. So this is the last video that I'm putting out for uh, 2023. Um, so this is a happy new year's. I wasn't actually planning to do a video today, but it's been a few days since I did a video and I missed you guys. I miss creating content. I filmed all of my videos in the run up to Christmas and then had a few days off. So this is the first video I've personally filmed since Christmas. So um, I hope you've had a fantastic Christmas. I wish you all the best for the new year for 2024. I know for many, many of my viewers, many of you out there, myself included, 2023 has not been the best year. <laughs> there have been good things about it but there's been a lot of bad things as well. I really hope that for all of you, 2024 is gonna be a better year. So happy new year. And back to the mace topic. Do you agree with my conclusion? Do you agree that basically 
out of armor and in most scenarios a mace is no easier to use than a sword it just it's just fighting with whatever happens to be in your hand however because of the particular advantages of the mace and, and characteristics of the sword in armoured fighting, I would perhaps agree that the mace is an easier weapon to use than the sword is. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Your comments down below are always much appreciated. Give us a thumbs up. I hope I'll see you in the new year, 2024. Here we come. We're ready for it. Thanks for watching. I have been Matt Easton and in 2024, I really hope that I'll continue to be. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.